Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at our next example, which is a beam being supported by two supports. One is a roller support, the other one is a pen support. Notice that the beam is carrying three loads, 400 pounds, 200 pounds, and 500 pounds. And let's say that the beam itself, is its weight is insignificant compared to the load, so we can just simply ignore the weight of the beam. Now what we're trying to do here is find the force at A both in the x and the y direction, find the force at B, both in the x and the y direction. Now, when we take a look at the supports, we realize that at the, at the point A right here, since it's a roller, the force can only be in the vertical direction. There can only be one force right here, which is perpendicular to the surface. But on the other side here, at point B, we can have both a vertical force and we can have a horizontal force, because the pin allows forces in both directions. So what we're trying to find is, we're trying to find the force at A in the y direction, we're trying to find the force at B in the y direction, and we're trying to find the force at B in the x direction. But then when we realize that all the load forces are only in the y direction, there's no other force in the x direction, from that it necessitates that the force of B in the x direction must equal zero, because we know that the sum of all the forces in the x direction must add up to zero and there's only one force which is the force at b in the x direction so therefore that force must equal zero which means we're only trying to find the vertical force at a and the vertical force at b so what we can do here is we can say well the sum of the force in the y direction the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero which means that the force at a in the y direction plus the force at B in the Y direction, they're both assumed to be positive because they're counteracting against the loads on the beam, minus the 400 pounds, minus the 200 pounds, and minus the 500 pounds. So here we have a single equation with two unknowns in it, so we cannot yet solve for the force at A and the force at B. To solve for that, we also have to use the moment of the force. So what we can do is we can assume that this here is the point of rotation, so we're going to find the moment, the sum of all the moments at A, and we know that's going to be equal to zero because it's a rigid body in equilibrium, but we have four forces causing the moment about A. We have FBY, 400, 200, and 500 pounds. Notice that the force at A in the y direction will not cause a moment here because the line of action of force goes right through the pivot point so therefore we don't have to worry about that. So this is equal to 400 pounds and notice the 400 pounds would cause a clockwise rotation that's a minus 2 feet times 400 pounds and I might as well put the units in makes it a little bit easier so 2 feet times 400 pounds that causes a negative torque or negative moment about that point. We have minus, that would be 11 feet, 11 feet times a force of 200 pounds, and minus 12 feet times a force of 500 pounds. So those are all the forces causing a clockwise motion about that point, if, of course, if it was allowed. But it's stopped by the force at B, which is pushing in the opposite direction, so it gives us a counterclockwise motion or a counterclockwise moment that would be a positive 10 feet times the force at B in the y direction. And in this equation, there's only one unknown, the force at B in the y direction, so therefore we can easily solve for that. So by turning the equation around and moving all the negatives to the other side, we end up with 10 feet times the force at B in the y direction is equal to 2 times 400, that would be a positive 800 foot-pounds. Because notice that I've moved all the other, all these negatives to the other side, they all become positive, then I turn the equation around. So plus 11 times this is 2200 foot-pounds, and plus 12 times this would be 6000 foot-pounds. All right, combining those, we get the following. So we have 10 feet times force at B in the Y direction is equal to 800 plus that, that gives me 3,000 plus that gives me 9,000, so that's 9,000 foot-pounds. 
And then dividing both sides by 10 feet, I get the force at B in the y direction is equal to 900 pounds. All right, if the force at B is 900 pounds, now we should be able to find the force at A because now we have this equation right here. So plugging this into our equation over here, we can now have the following equation. We can now say that zero is equal to FA in the y direction plus, that would be 900 pounds minus 400 pounds minus 200 pounds and minus 500 pounds. Combining those, I get zero is equal to FA in the y direction, which is equal to, oh, I can't say it, the equal's already there. So we have 500, that's 900, so this 900 cancels out those 900, so we have minus 200 pounds, which means that the force at A in the y direction must equal 200 pounds. So now we have both solutions. We have the force at B in the y direction, and we have the force at A in the y direction. So notice we're always going to use some sort of combination of the sum of the force in the x direction, the sum of the force in the y direction, and the sum of the moments about any of the points of support to come up with the unknowns. In this case, we just needed two of the, the equations to come up with the result, and here, this is how we did that.